Welcome back to another edition of the Coaches Show. It's the Forcers take down the Cornell Rams. Adam Player alongside the head coach of the Forcers, Jim Catanzari. Well, Coach Cat, first road trip, a successful road trip. Uh, what did you make of the start of that game, uh, taking it in an early lead against Cornell? Yeah, you know, uh, coming back off a road game, the first one of the season with a win is exactly what you want to do. <clears throat> we, uh, we struggled a little bit um, at times keeping our intensity up, but I, I thought that our first half, you know, we go out right away, get that first touchdown on the first drive. Uh, that was pretty good. Defensively, we came out firing on all cylinders, had a great um, two red zone stops right before halftime. Uh, one that was on a sudden change situation. I thought that was really, really uh, great by our, our defense to respond. Um, special teams made a big play on the uh, on the fake punt to get the, uh, the big first down that led to our second touchdown. And, uh, you know, I thought first half-wise, we came out, really had a, a good a good plan just need to execute a little higher level we got a little bit of penalty problems there to, you know false starts and holdings and things like that and so we just need to clean that up a lot to, to get ourselves back yeah certainly set the tone there in the first half the run game drove the offense all four touchdowns rushing touchdowns just talk about uh, what the running backs have been able to do and obviously AJ Jackson a couple more rushing touchdowns yeah you know I thought, I thought the running backs played well we, we were very uh, I guess you could say efficient in the game with some of the stuff that they were doing defensively, um, it allowed us to stretch the field horizontally with bubble screens and things like that that I, I thought really helped us. You know, in my opinion, those were like run plays. I almost feel like we ran the ball, you know, all but 10 plays on Saturday, even though they were screens and stuff like that. Um, I felt that that was something that was there for us. And if we stayed out of the penalty situation, we'd have been all right just continuing to do that. Um, you know, Jace Knudsen and Mel Chun both get across the end line. Uh, for touchdowns, you know, Josiah having the big 43-yard rip on the on the fake punt. Um, and then, yeah, A.J.'s a good football player, and at the in the fourth quarter in that last drive, you know, run the same play three or four times. I think it was four times in a row maybe, and that, that closed out the game for us. So I thought that was um, was pretty good. We've got a bunch of guys that can, can get better. I think they all wish they had more carries right now. I think I wish they had more carries. Um, I wish we would have played another 40 plays in the game like we intend to and, and had those carries split out amongst them. But it was a, you know – an efficient game when we were moving and doing it well. You know, five play drives here, five play drives there for touchdowns. Uh, but I, I thought that, you know, we could have strung together a couple where we had three and outs that we needed to get the get things moving on that one. Yeah, staying on the topic of A.J. Jackson, just the way he was able to adapt. But both of his touchdowns coming in the second half, both in the run game, 77 rushing yards. Just talk about the way he was able to take over that game in the second half and just his veteran presence. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, A.J.'s talented. Like he, there's a reason why he's been a multi-time All-American. People, I think, across the D3 spectrum know who he is. Um, they're seeing a different side of him this year in, in the run game versus the, the passing game, but he's still catching the ball in the passing game too. Uh, so I think that, you know, right now, just in some of the situations where that physical presence that he is as a runner and how aggressive he attacks the hole, um, we've been able to get something. And, and to be honest with you, it's really more of a – um, if we're not getting the ball in the passing game, we still got to get the ball in his hands. And that was something I think we learned last year that, you know, um, we're sitting there trying to force the passing game to him. And teams take coverages and they bracket him. They do different things that make him not viable in the passing game. So we need to, you know, find other ways to get the ball in his hands, whether it's in the screen game, whether it's handing the ball off to him, whatever it is. And so this year we came into the season with that as a plan. And he's adapted great to it. He's, he's doing a great job taking care of his body, preparing for two different roles. Uh, but I, I think that, you know, from a, you know, as a six-year guy, he knows our playbook inside and out. And so asking him to do things is, is pretty simple. Josh Gasco is studying his return after missing week two, 15 for 20 in the passing game. Just uh, your evaluation of him after seeing uh, two games out of him so far. Yeah, I mean, Josh has done a great job, you know, stepping in this year. I think on Saturday there's probably about five plays we'd like to get back. You know, I, th I think he and I would agree about that. There was a operational issue with a delay of game. There was a, uh, um, a fumble as he was stepping up in the pocket trying to throw the football. And, you know, whether it was an incomplete pass or a fumble, we don't get instant replay, so we'll, we'll go with the call on the field. Um, and, and so I, I think he, he does a nice job again. Another guy who knows the playbook in and out, um, executes at a high level, takes what's there, uh, didn't try to force the ball on Saturday, which I thought was good. Um, I thought he was going to try to you know force a little bit coming back off the off the injury. And so um, seeing him take the the things that were there first, you know, throwing to different receivers. I mean, his first pass today went to Jade Barth for his first career catch. Um, so there's just some different things going on there that I thought really. Um, helped him and he, he did that without one of his security blankets and Jay Costries who missed the game. So I, I think that, you know, as you as you run into that situation, you know, going into the game, completing 75% of your passes, uh, I don't think any coach is going to complain about that. Uh, defensively, uh, Jackson Sander with 12 total touch touchdowns, excuse me, 12 tackles, seven solo and five assisted, and then 
Blake Ware, nine solo tackles, one assisted for 10 tackles. Just talk about uh, what that duo has done defensively. Yeah, those guys as sophomores really, uh, you know, have taken the lead of that spot and, and are really running all over the place trying to make plays. Um, I thought that Cornell, you know, stuck with their run game um, a lot longer in the game than, you know, maybe we even thought they were going to with the, the score differentials it was, and that allowed those guys to make those plays. But they are also making plays in the passing game as there were some, you know, check down routes and things like that that were being thrown. Um, I think that both guys, you know, Blake is one of the, you know, the best weight room guys that we have. Jackson's one of the most athletic linebackers we have. And they really lean on their skill set there. And as they've continued to um, understand the new defensive scheme that we're running, um, seeing how that fits them, you're starting to see them become more and more productive. Uh, the second half, obviously, Cornell's offense coming alive, all of their scores coming in that section of the game. Uh, what do you look to try and adjust kind of going forward to try and close out some games a little smoother? Yeah, I think that they, you know, they hit a big pass play on the first touchdown drive. Um, they got behind us on the defense. They got behind our safeties. And that, I think that's a... Uh, you know, something we need that's over the last two weeks, something we need to continue to address. Um, you know, then they had two really long drives. I mean, they were like seven and a half minute drives. And so it was one of those things where defensively we made them work, but we didn't stop them. And we need to really find a way to, to get off the field on some of those third downs, um, give us a chance to, to recover. And I, I think that one of the things actually, I'm going to put the onus on the offense on one, we had the three and out in between those two long drives. We needed to have a drive in that moment to buy, buy some time for our defense to rest, get their energy back. Um, but they ended up playing a lot of plays in about 18 minutes of football. They were on the field for 15 of those minutes. And we need to really do a better job of getting off the field. Um, on third downs, we had several third downs that they converted. Um, but also, when we get our chance to get back out there on offense, stay on the field. And, and we, we did not do that on either side of the ball. And so we really need to address that part and get better at that. Um, and I think if we do those things, we'll be fine. Uh, the penalty trouble is something that you alluded to, 11 penalties overall, uh, costing 80 yards. Just talk about how you try and make some changes there, obviously, as the season goes on. Yeah, you know, it's, it's wild. The first game of the year, I think we had 9 or 10, and then the second week, I think we had 3. And we thought we'd had enough of a conversation about it and kept talking about it. And then on Saturday, um, the pre-snap penalties and the, it were, were dangerous for us. And then we had uh, a couple of matchups that led to our guys doing some really uncharacteristic things where, you know, led to some penalties and um, I think we had two personal fouls on late hits on the quarterback or something like that, and we, we just can't do that. We can't extend plays or, or gain extra yards even if they've converted the first down. We need to be better about that. And um, I thought on Saturday uh, I was, that was probably one of the two things I was most disappointed with in our performance um, is that we reverted back to being a penalized team, and those are things we can control. You guys will get the week off. It's the bye week here this week. As a head coach, what do you look for in that week? Obviously, some injuries, trying to get some guys back. But what is that week all about for this group? Yeah, right now it's getting ourselves as healthy and fresh for the, the, the final stretch here, these final seven games, um, whatever we need to do that way. And then secondly, we've got some young guys. We want to really get a lot of developmental reps this week, um, making sure that they're continuing to progress. Uh, there may be a role for them in these next couple of games. And if there is, this is kind of like a, a second week where it's really going to be focused on them. You know, some of our, our top guys aren't going to take a whole lot of reps this week. And it's some of those young guys stepping in and getting reps on our offense and defense instead of running scouts and making sure that they're staying fresh on those things. That way, if they're needed, they're ready to go. Obviously, it's going to be Knox College for homecoming. Still some time in between that. Is this a week also where you're looking at film already for that Knox team or just trying to go back and look through kind of what has already happened so far this year? Yeah, we'll spend a little bit of time on self-scout. But then, uh, you know, with Knox, especially with them being a triple option team, um, our, our defense will get a jump start on that and start working towards um, that game plan this week a little bit and introducing it and making sure our guys are on the same page. All right, Forrester fans, that will wrap up Episode 3 of the Coaches Show. The Foresters will be back in action October 5th, homecoming at 2 o'clock kickoff against the Knox Prairie Fire.